Welcome to ABC's Veterans Voices, honoring those who served. I'm Josh Bond. And I'm Alex Hazard. If you've ever wondered what it's like to be in World War I, maybe the best way is to take a journey through letters. And in our first story of the evening, that's exactly what we did. There were approximately 60 million soldiers who fought in World War I. But Bert Layton has a story of just one that we get to envision through his letters he wrote to his parents that she compiled into a book. Clarence Layton wrote the letters that are printed in this book uh, when he was in the Army in World War I. 1917, 1918, 1919. It was while Clarence was in World War I that he asked for these letters to be shared. Also, please save my letters, as I may write more fully in them than in my diary and shall want to refer to them when I get home and perhaps use them for articles or a book. And finally, the book. <laughs> a journalism major with an unsure path after graduation, Clarence volunteered to join the Army. Recruiters were going to college graduations and looking for volunteers for service in World War I in France, and, and he and a lot of his classmates volunteered, and within three weeks he was in Pennsylvania in training. Clarence's story differs from the common war stories we see in movies or read about, though perhaps painted more lightly to not worry his parents for whom these letters were written, it does seem as though he had a rather pleasant experience. I think this, uh, this is a different story of World War I. He was not in the trenches, it's not full of horrible things that happened. Uh, he did get close to the trenches for one little trip, uh, get an idea of it, but um, he, it was an experience for him, and uh, I think he was glad he did it. <laughs> and uh, it, it describes uh, so much of, of, of the life in training. The letter I'm holding uh, was in 1918, before the war was ended and Paris was uh, subdued. <laughs> but then he visited the next year after the armistice and things had perked up some, and I liked his descriptions of Paris. Like so many soldiers, when Clarence returned, he rarely talked to his family about his experience deployed. So these letters in this book are a way for those stories, the war, and Clarence to not be forgotten. We learned about his experiences in, in uh, World War I. Uh, we really knew nothing about it. He never uh, talked about it. When, after the war, he got busy with his life, his career, and his family, and um, he, uh, he never had time to, to use his letters. I have felt guilty of uh, doing this because uh, we've made public all his private letters. But I think in the long run, he would be glad that we did it. Bert said it was no small task putting this book together, but she was glad she did it. For our next story, we meet Steve Lewis, a 97-year-old Buffalo soldier, one of the last Buffalo soldiers to still be alive, and he said he was at Pearl Harbor the day it was attacked by Japanese troops. Here's his story. Army Corporal Steve Lewis is living history. I was in 12th grade when the uh, Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. The 97-year-old Manatee County veteran vividly remembers the day that changed America forever. And on Sunday, and I, and I didn't, and so it says Japanese bomb Pearl Harbor, and I, we didn't have, a, you know, during that time, we didn't have no TVs, we had a radio. Although after Pearl Harbor, Lewis enrolled at Florida A&M College in Tallahassee, now FAMU, a country at war meant studies took a back seat. Every man in college would join, had to be in the Elizabeth Reserve Corps.
Eventually, he was assigned to the 9th Cavalry, one of two black cavalries known as the Buffalo Soldiers. The all African American groups started during the Civil War. Their service, though, lasted until 1948 when President Harry S. Truman integrated the military. And by the early 1950s, they were gone. And we didn't know a thing about no Buffalo Soldiers in the Army. Okay. We, we never heard it. Mr. Lewis may be the last living Buffalo soldier around. He remembers his duties well. You man was assigned a horse, and you had to take the horse. You had to go out, you ride the horse, bring him in, wash him down, clean him up, feed him, mm -hmm. then you go eat. Ralph Barnett is putting together a documentary about the Buffalo soldiers. In spite of the huge swath of American history that they cover and the, their importance in American history, the, uh, the story has never really been told. Mr. Lewis is going to be a big part of that film. They don't give the, 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 the uh, publicity needs. For Veterans Voices, I'm Rod Carter. Steve, thank you again so much for your service. After the break, we're going to stop into a tasty and interesting bakery in Washington, D.C. Veterans Voices is proudly brought to you by Boots Brewing.